What you guys got another video here for you on how to clean up Windows 10 privacy settings with scripts. This will also remove any sort of bloatware or anything like that. It will completely get your Windows 10 exactly how you want it. The trouble is using scripts is very, very dangerous and it's very a powerful way of doing things. So you need to understand a little bit about how scripts work and how to read them. Otherwise you can run into big trouble. That's why I've put this disclaimer up on the screen to make sure you read it and you understand you're doing this at your own risk. Now, before you start running any sort of script, you want to make a system restore point by typing system restore in the search box and then create restore point. Now by default, system restore is turned off. So you will need to configure this and turn it on. Now, once it's turned on, you'll be able to then create a restore point. So I'm just going to give it a bit of storage here. You can give it how much you want, apply and okay. And then we can click the create a system restore point. Now we need to give it a name and I'm going to call this before privacy change. And this will let me know that this was before I did any sort of privacy changes when running that script. So we're going to apply that and let that create our system restore point. That's it. We're done there. Now what I advise you to do also is make a registry backup just in case you want to roll back to the previous version. So we're going to open up regedit. I type in regedit in the search box and then open up the registry editor. Click on the bit that says computer. This will back up the whole computer. Go file and export and give it a name. You can call this whatever you like. You can call it the same as what you uh, just named your restore point before privacy change, whatever you want to do here, just type in what you want to call it and then save it in a location. Now, a good place to normally save these is in the C root directory. That way, you know, they're in a place there, but that's now backed up. So we've got two restore points created here which we'll be able to revert back if we want to. Now, once that's all done, you can just check to make sure that you do have your registry back up. And we already know that we've got our system restore point done. And then you want to really back up all your data before you continue messing with your PC, just in case something goes wrong. So make sure you back up all of your data. Now we can look at our privacy settings. You can see by default, they're all turned on. And if you've got these all turned on, you can manually go through here and turn these off. Now, if you're not familiar with scripting or how scripts work, then I'd advise you to do this manually by yourself because scripts on the internet can be very powerful and very dangerous if you don't know what they're going to be doing. You can see here, you can download Windows 10 debloater scripts. These will allow you to uh, debloat Windows 10, disable Cortana if you want to, and uh, protect your privacy and do a bunch of other things here. You can see disable telemetry and also remove OneDrive. There's bunches of them on the internet. You can find them here and they're sometimes um, updated and sometimes they're not updated for a long time. So be very, very careful when you're using these, okay? Now, the reason why I don't like leaving links to scripts because when people run them, it could mess up their system and then they'll come flying back to my channel saying, you broke my PC it now has disabled uh, this, I can't get this working. So that's because they don't understand how to read a script and know what this script is gonna be changing on the system. It will make massive changes to the operating system. So be very, very careful when you're running scripts if you don't know what it's disabling. There may be settings that you don't want to be disabled and because it's a script, it won't give you, uh, do you wanna disable this? Do you want to enable this? It won't give you those options. It will just go and run and disable everything that is in that script. This is why scripts are very powerful, but they're very dangerous. If you don't know what is there, you will need to disable uh, some of these items or delete some of these items in the script if you don't want it to do that. Now, these separate scripts are ideal because it tells you exactly what it's going to do. It's going to disable, say, for instance, uh, OneDrive or disable Cortana. And that's how you want to really run a script. You don't want these big, powerful scripts that do one big thing that does a load of stuff in one fell swoop because inside there, there may be settings that you don't want. So if you did want to say, for instance, run a, one single script here, you would just open up PowerShell as administrator and then you can copy and paste it and run it. This is probably the simplest way of doing it. You can navigate to that file and run it, and it will then go ahead and start to disable and delete uh, that type of item. 
and they normally have another script there to re-enable it. You can see it's already uh, disabled OneDrive and took it out of the system. And now that is that over with. We've now got rid of OneDrive and that's basically how you run a script and remove any sort of item. You may see the screen go black. This is just Explorer being closed down so it can finish off the process of removing uh, the item that it's trying to remove and then it will try to restart Explorer again to make your desktop come back. That's how they basically remove some of these features because they are a running process and they need to close the process down so they can remove it from the system. So that's how you remove any sort of feature or item using a script. It's very simple but there's many more complex scripts out there that will do a bunch of things in one foul swoop. So be very careful when you're downloading a script off the internet and running it on your system because it could have a bunch of code inside there that is going to delete a certain particular type of feature that you might want. Let's just say for instance it might disable a Cortana and you might want Cortana and guess what if you run it there could be code in there to disable and remove Cortana and you won't be able to use it. So you have to be very selective on what you're trying to do. I would personally recommend using single scripts of single items and remove those rather than running power scripts like you're seeing here which will actually remove a bunch of settings and stuff in one go. Now scripts are awesome in their own right but if you don't know what you're doing you could end up messing up your operating system very quickly so you have to know what you're doing when using scripts. The problem with scripts are you have very little control over what the script is going to do. Once you execute it it will follow it right to the end and it will start removing um, features from your system and deleting stuff and you won't know what that is unless you know how to read scripts properly. So be very, very careful when running scripts off the internet because it may be disabling and deleting features that you wanted to keep. And these can be, you know, essential to what you want to do. It might be the Windows Store. It might be removing Windows Store from the Windows 10 operating system and then you have no Windows Store and you may have wanted to keep Windows Store. So it's very difficult to say a, a script is for everyone. You can see here this one is another Windows 10 debloater which runs as a batch file and these can be very powerful as well by removing certain features. So be careful when you start to right click and run as administrator on these things because once they run you can see it all flying up on the command prompt box there. This is going to start removing programs and making changes to the Windows 10 operating system. Now scripts have been around for a very long time and they can certainly save you a lot of time when you need to do the same process over and over again on a bunch of different computers. You can run a script and it will take care of it all for you in one fell swoop. So that's why it's important to understand how a script works. Now if you've got something that you've already moved on the system and the script has got that part in there and it's trying to remove it, you may get some red text coming up or you may get some other bits coming up. So be very, very careful. Now you can see here it's disabled the uh, Cortana. It's got a, rid of a bunch of other stuff like applications. It's removed a bunch of tiles. You want to reboot the system once you've run a script and then go back and you can see that all these settings should now be uh, disabled. So let's just quickly go into uh, the settings pane here and we'll take a look and see uh, what the settings have been changed like. So let's go into privacy here and inside here you'll see it's disabled a bunch of settings already and it saves me a bunch of time but it may have also made a bunch of changes inside the services area and other places on your Windows operating system and you might be making changes to some of the stuff that you didn't want it to change. You can see it's removed a bunch of applications from here and it will do if it's in the list of that script when you run it. So do I recommend that people go and download scripts off the internet and run them? The short answer to that is no, you shouldn't do that because you don't know what that script is going to be doing and if you don't know anything about coding or scripting or anything like that then you want to leave these things well alone. They're very powerful and they make a bunch of changes that might not be reversible and you could end up having to reformat the system and reinstall Windows. So be careful when you're running scripts like that, okay? And also 
um, there's plenty of programs out there that will do these jobs in a much more safer way and you can visually see on a GUI interface on how to uh, make changes to these things. Also some of these services have been stopped or disabled and you might need some of those services to do certain things on your computer and you've got no control over it when running a script. So if you're looking to do something very quickly and you've not got the time or effort to put in to learn how to use scripts then leave them well alone uh, I would say stick to uh, things like shut up 10 and programs like that and leave these to the experts or advanced users okay now I won't be leaving any links for these scripts in the video description just because I think they are just too dangerous to leave links to especially when people could just run them and damage their system but if you do want to find them, they're pretty easy to find on the internet. And if you can't find them, then you probably shouldn't be using the script in the first place. That's my personal opinion. Anyway, my name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this one has been useful to you and hope you enjoyed it. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. Bye for now. Now, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos. Thank <laughs> you.